let's make my business 2024 vision board together. I'm just gonna put it on a regular piece of paper because it's just for my business goals next year. The rest of my vision board supplies are scissors, green marker because that is my business color, glue, and of course a bunch of photos. I don't own any of these photos, I just pulled them for fun from Pinterest and I'll be making the vision board with you. Can't forget coffee. Let's get started. So the main things I'm going to focus on for 2024 are doing more of what I love and less of what I don't love. That seems pretty obvious, but I think that being intentional with everything I do this upcoming year is going to make a huge difference in my business growth and my happiness that goes along with it. In addition to doing more of what I love, I also want to do more personal and professional development. I am my business, so if I'm not growing, then my business won't either. Another focus that I'm gonna be paying attention to this year is balance. So while business growth is really important to me, having balance between my work life and my personal life is even more important. I became an entrepreneur three years ago, and I think the biggest draw of being an entrepreneur is being able to have that balance, that time freedom, right? So you can do what you love, but you also feel like you have a normal life. And the last focus is gonna be consistent controlled growth. Where the past two years I have also done vision boards, that was not the case. I just want growth, growth, growth as fast as possible. So I think making that change this year and being specific with how I want controlled growth will make it so that balance portion I was talking about earlier will be easier to achieve. For those of you who haven't come across my channel before, I help business owners get more clients from Instagram. So I not only coach them through how to use Instagram, why they're using Instagram, when to use Instagram, but how to actually turn your followers into loyal clients. Like I said, I started my business about three years ago now, and it was definitely a hard decision and a hard journey, but I'm working every single year to make it the best I can. By doing these vision boards, it really gives me a chance to reflect on the past year and set more goals for next year. And while I do try and set goals more often than just once a year, I think taking the time to do just the bigger picture goals once a year has been enough for me. Everything else is either month to month or quarter to quarter. I do have to say I'm not the best at cutting things straight. It's embarrassing. Let's talk about some of my goals for next year. Hopefully this video motivates you to make your own vision board. I know a lot of people don't make actually physical vision boards. So if you want to make one, but you don't want to print everything out and cut everything, then I recommend using something like Canva. I just pulled all these photos off Pinterest, which was really easy, really fun. And then you can make some sort of collage in Canva. So next year, I'm going to really try to up my content creation. That can be really challenging, especially when we're all so busy and our business requires so much of our time. I tell my clients every day how much they should be creating content. And so I really need to practice what I preach and start creating more of my own as well. I really have a bad habit of really helping my clients first and leaving my Instagram to kind of suffer because of it. So this year I'm gonna really try to avoid that and focus on not only my client's success, but also my own. And it's not just about the quantity of content you're making, but also the quality. So I wanna be more intentional with making sure I'm speaking to just my ideal client, not just everyone out there. I do feel like I'm back in elementary school cutting all of these out, but we will get there eventually. Another huge goal of mine this year is to do more public speaking opportunities. I've done a few conferences and speeches in front of large crowds or even webinars in the past. 
but I'd really like to improve my public speaking skills. And the only way to do that is to really put yourself out there and do it. So that's going to be a big one for me next year. Plus, public speaking is a really good way of getting your name out there and getting more clients. So that's going to be hopefully one of my top marketing strategies for next year. It's funny because I used to have the biggest fear of public speaking, like in college, public speaking was my worst nightmare. And I just remember thinking, how am I supposed to stand up and talk for five minutes straight? But now I give 30 minute presentations and I swear I could go on and on and on. It really just depends on how passionate you are on the subject. And if you know your stuff, you could talk about it forever. I think in college when we were forced to have certain topics, it was really hard to find the motivation to really figure out what to say up there. But now that I have my business and I'm so passionate about helping my clients, it's so much easier to come up with the speech and deliver it to a big group of scary people. Another goal I have that seems pretty obvious is more happy customers. I think every business owner out there can say that they want more clients or want more money, but I'm really trying to focus on being intentional and making sure all my goals are very aligned. Not only do I want more clients, but I want more happy clients. I want clients to walk away saying that this was the best investment they ever made in their business. And not only that they learned so much valuable content from me, but that they really grew their own confidence as well and are able to create content confidently. I think that's something we all struggle with is being our most confident selves online and showing off who we truly are because you can't meet everyone in person. So you're trying to market yourself online and it can be really difficult when you're nervous to even talk on camera. So like I said, just with public speaking, practice is key with talking to the camera as well. So yeah, happy customers that not only learned a lot, but increase their confidence as well. I also think that one of the worst parts about being an entrepreneur is feeling like you're completely alone in this. If you're a solo entrepreneur, you don't have coworkers, you don't have a boss, and most of the time you don't even have an office to go to every day. So you spend the majority of time by yourself and that can be really hard. So while going online and posting videos and showing off who you are, will never replace being with someone actually in person. It does help, at least with me, to have social interactions online, and build a community online that supports you and cheers you on. And that definitely helps because a lot of people end up giving up and they never accomplish their goals. And I think that having that online presence and that online community that came from it really helps people follow through. Because the truth is, no one's going through this alone. There's always gonna be someone else out there who's struggling with something that you are too, or is celebrating the same wins as you. I actually have quite a lot of accountability partners. So people I meet with weekly or bi-weekly that help me with my goals and make sure that I'm following through with what I say I'm going to. And not only does that, again, make me feel like I'm not alone in this, but it also holds me accountable to everything I put on my vision board. Just like hopefully making this video and talking to you guys all about this will hold me accountable as well. Okay, so I have all the photos cut out right here. I am going to title this and we'll get started gluing it all down. Well, I'm not an artist and I just messed up. But no one's perfect. I'm gonna go get a, another piece of paper. Be right back. <laughs> I just walked by the TV and it randomly turned on. Thought we had a ghost all of a sudden. Turns out the dog was laying on the remote. Okay, redo. That took so long. I'm not that great at black letters. Let's talk more about professional and personal development. Like I said earlier, if I'm not growing as a person or a business owner, then I'm kind of setting my business up for failure. So I try and read a lot of growth books 
And while that might sound like the worst thing ever to some people, it actually is very helpful with my mindset and my goal setting. One book I really recommend is You Are a Badass at Making Money. And I can link that below if you guys want to see more. That has really shifted my money making mindset a lot and how wanting more money and making more money is not a bad thing. A lot of people have a bad mindset around money and that's why it can be so hard to make more. But I think that working on your mindset around money, which I try and do every day, it is a challenge, but it really makes a difference in not holding yourself back from making more. I think that being able to constantly learn more about your industry and being a better business owner will really separate you from your competition and make sure that you're growing every single year. I recently started this YouTube channel. It's very new to me. So one of my goals this year is to grow my YouTube channel. Um, so hit the subscribe button. No, I'm just kidding. I put getting a vlogging camera on my vision board because I really want to start using a better quality camera next year and investing more into growing my YouTube. And it's not easy. I don't know how many of you guys have tried growing a YouTube channel. Let me know in the comments if you have because it can be very challenging when you get one bad comment or your growth is a lot slower than you thought it would be. So growing my YouTube in this upcoming year would really mean a lot to me. It would be a huge accomplishment and it would positively impact my business. So I'm definitely going to try and spend more time and invest more into growing it. So the main ways that I actually get clients for my business is one, Instagram, and two, networking. And I'm a part of a few different local networking groups, and that's also how I've improved some of my public speaking skills is getting out there and figuring out how to talk to a bunch of strangers about what I do. But I really recommend networking if you are looking to grow your business as well. It's a really good way to supplement social media. Um, obviously, I'm a huge fan of social media and everyone knows it's going to impact your business if you do it right. But having something to supplement it is also really important. Going to networking events, I make deeper connections faster than social media. So online, when you're meeting someone, you might not have a very good or very deep conversation with them right away. It might take a few weeks or months to even get there. But in person, you can bond and connect with that other business owner a lot quicker. When I'm going to networking events, I always try and have people follow my Instagram so I can follow up with them afterwards. And that's kind of how I use both networking and Instagram to my advantage. And they really play hand in hand. I wouldn't say that one is more successful than the other because I use both at the same time. Another big part of growing my business consistently and controlled next year will be collaborating more. Collaborating is such a fun way to not only have a mutually beneficial experience, but also really get to know the other business owner and make marketing fun again. Like I was saying before, being alone as a business owner is not that fun. So inviting other people to work alongside you makes a huge difference and keeps you motivated. And the last goal that I'm really focusing on is balance. So while I do have really big goals for myself next year, I also want to enjoy every day. So if I feel like I need a break from posting for a couple days or even a week, that's okay. Going through a burnout is always going to be worse than taking a break when you know you need it. And this doesn't have to just apply to posting. You can have balance in the way you set up your schedule. I usually like having most of my meetings towards the beginning of the week and then doing most of my busy work or work on my computer towards the end of the week. That's just how I operate best. 
but finding the right balance for your working schedule is going to make the biggest difference between how good or bad you feel at the end of the week. So perfecting that balance is a huge goal for me this year. I think one of my favorite things I put on here is you don't grow when you're comfortable. Maybe that's something we can work on together next year is constantly pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone and seeing what growth is possible. I finally finished my 2024 vision board. I think it turned out really nice and it just gives me a physical representation of what I want next year to look at so I'm not going in blind. Thanks for getting arts and crafty with me and hopefully you create your own 2024 vision board as well. I'd love to know what you thought of this video in the comments and watch this one next to never run out of content ideas ever again. Thanks guys, I will see you in the next video.